You might have caught a previous video where I was playing with these mesh-tastic units and this was an enclosure I made to take the unit plus a battery. All good. And then I started playing with making little antennas and getting quite good range out of these things. And this is the one with the tracker in it, the, the GPS. The problem is though, they really don't seem to work very well indoors and I want to make a version that I can have outdoors. So I thought I'll just recycle this. So I know it's got the GPS and things like that, which maybe makes it a bit overkill for something that's going to be used in a static position. But, you know, we've got it, might as well use it. And what I thought I would do is mount it in a box like this. So I found this, I think I bought this once just to pull the MCBs. I think it was on offer and the actual, it was cheaper to buy the RCDs or MCDs with a box um, than just on their own. So this is a perfectly, hopefully waterproof enough enclosure. I mean, it looks pretty good to me. And it does have a gasket around here, which implies it's trying to be. So I thought what I'd do is figure out a way of mounting this inside and making a, an antenna. I don't know what this antenna is. I'm not even sure it's tuned for the correct frequency. So we'll check that out too to make sure that's in spec. And if not, maybe adjust it. First things first, I have to undo my beautiful enclosure. If you're interested in making your own version of this enclosure, I do have it on the Prusa site. I, can't, I always forget what it's called, printables. The printable site and I might have it on Thingiverse, but it's probably most likely on printables. I stopped using the Thingiverse because it had such bad bugs when I'd use it. You know, like they wouldn't update and it would crash. <laughs> you know, I'm not used to websites crashing. Who put this together? Why is it so tight? <laughs> you can see it's survived quite a long time now. It's It's been in here for some months. And that's what it looks like. Lost my buttons. So you've got the GPS antenna here. I believe that's the Bluetooth antenna there. And of course, there's my battery underneath, which I think I might decide to keep. I'm not entirely sure. So remove that. I would like to make it permanently powered. That's something I didn't mention. So I do have a power source near. So if I can find a way of mounting a power source uh, like an AC adapter inside the box, that would be super cool. So antenna out and look at that. It did such a good job of this thing. You can't just slide it out. It's actually halfway in the hole like that. So it's, maybe I can break it out. Yes, just about. And this battery, oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> some sort of spludge. I don't know how I've... Oh. oh, it's not even glued down. That's pretty perfect, isn't it? I've got it all apart to this point. I just noticed something. Could it? Should it? Oh! <laughs> that is almost too good to be true. You could see with just some minor modification and liberal application of hot glue you could have a ready to rock solution there the problem with that is maybe the antenna wire isn't long enough Oops. that sits quite nicely in there so let's have a look see if we did have such a setup what's the possibility of our antenna working out Oh, it would work out too. Look, straight out the top of the box. Mm. So if we do that, all of this would be probably reasonably self-contained within, say, this area, you know, this top of the lid, which gives us this entire volume to figure out how we're gonna fit in the equivalent of an AC adapter. And if we wanna just say, look, this is a particular, similar USB adapter, Ooh, you've definitely got room within there for that. So the question is, how do we modify this to take our cable out? And I think the easiest way would be literally just to make a cut here in the lid. And we can accomplish that in a couple of ways. We could use our Dremel style tool, which would be definitely the best way to do it. Or we're just going to use a soldering iron because it is 3D printed case and just blitz it off. So just hold that there. Let's see where we're coming out of. About there. So I'm just gonna make a little mark here. A little notch right there. And I'm just going to 
carve out a channel just with a bit of heat and that's all you need really. I'll just clean the soldering iron off camera while we do that. That's good, still molten. <laughs> Give it a sec to harden back up and depending on how clean you leave that I think you'll be okay. I'm just going to ream this a little bit. It's pretty rough. Now, do we want the battery in there? Mm, I do like the idea of emergency battery backup. Although it also adds to the potential of something that's going to explode in the case when you least want it to. But I'm willing to take that risk. Also, I need to research if these things need to be password protected and things like that. So once you shove them out outside, effectively, you're not really going to be able to get to it. So you want to make sure that it's all configured however you need it to be configured forever, potentially, because you're not going to be able to get to it, not going to be able to get to the USB. Generally, it could be a bit of a disaster, couldn't it? So let's get those in now. Now we have this other problem where we've got the buttons to pop back in, but we've also got to route that wire through. I do like the idea of keeping the buttons, so I think that's a neat addition. Right, so bring the parts together. <laughs> oh, I think that was kind of successful. Yeah, I think we're going all right. See if we can tighten it up. And I never really know what mode to leave these in, by the way. Tracker mode, relay mode. I've not gone out of their way to make it super simple to understand, although it's probably in the documentation. RTFM. Right, that is good. That's ready to go. And realistically, I've got plenty of play there. Nice. So this strictly wouldn't be waterproof, so I'm going to have a quick look though, see if I've got an O-ring to put on here. Hopefully that'll do. It's a bit tight. Come on. Don't split. Don't split. Don't split. It was good. Let's clean up that burr. Come on. Yeah. A bit on the tight side. <laughs> it's tempting now. So should I leave it tight or make it that little bit bigger? <laughs> Wasn't too much effort. <laughs> and then we're going to put in the various washers. And we are done. It'd be great to get the power in here. I don't have a 90 degree USB-C lead on hand. Either way, you know, either this way 90 or this way 90 would be good. Um, so I'm going to see if I can just nibble this away with my side cutters just to see if I can make it a little bit more compliant because you never really know how far the metal of the connector itself extends. You can see there might be a little bit of play if we're lucky. We definitely have to be very ginger so we don't cut through anything too important. In fact, if I go around this side as well. Nom. Nom. I might be able to peel that back. Great. Great smashing super, great smashing super. Ugh. Get out of it, you. Get out of it, you. You can see already way more compliance on the bend right now. Oh, I can see a wire. <laughs> For that little, we're getting a bit close there. But, ooh. Oh yeah, I think we're still good. We're still good. So 
So that's about as much as she'll take. So if we go back to this, see if we can get that this out. This desk is getting mighty messy. Plug that in like so. Look at that. That is absolutely spot on. Only the most quality of installations use hot glue. So I'm going to just dab a couple of bits here so this doesn't slide all around while I'm trying to position it. So one in each corner I think should be good. And then I'm going to seam it with the hot glue. See, it's already trying to rock around. Rocking around the Christmas tree. Right, one more. Stay. That hot glue is cooling down now, and you can see I've got the white wire in. It's not caught on, but hopefully it's just because the screen. Yep, the screen's gone to sleep, so it is still active. I've got my temporary antenna in here. You can see that's basically just the regular antenna with a pen over the top <laughs> for now, until I can just buy something more suitable. So that's fine. I'm going to put that aside because now we want to work out the power source. So I've got a wire coming up through the back of the box, which has got the mains on the end. I'd quite like to just use this. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> So sometimes I've seen when these break, if you, you can get to the terminal. That does look quite terminal-ish, but that looks like it's gone right in. These are a good quality one. This is a motor railer. That is a solid piece of metal that goes right down into there. Yeah, I might have to go a little bit deeper on this one. Oh, pinch myself. Took a bit of tomfoolery, but I managed to get the end off. And that's the board in there. And you can see there's the USB, all of the circuitry, quite nice. And this is our little rail system, so it slides in. And uh, we're gonna be reusing that. That's a really nice little enclosure there for this project. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna solder the mains lead directly to the terminals right there. I do have the soldering iron just off camera, and I do have the wire almost ready so let's prepare that now this is mains so be careful I mean I don't know how many rules you might be breaking in your country if you're doing this but just be be careful I'm just tinning the ends now don't have it plugged in when you're doing this and I'm going to tin those connections ouch CB. But before we solder that on, I'm just going to trim them right back. We want them at their minimum, really. Oh, that's a nice one. That is a nice one indeed. Let's see if we can do the same for the neutral. I think we can. We're in all the all the control here. Yep, yep, that is looking nice. So we've got our hot glue, hopefully still warm from earlier. I'm just going to throw a bead in here to stop that board from sliding out. Realistically though you could, you could potentially route these wires in a certain way and pot it. If you have a resin you could pot this I mean, it'll take all the hot glue in the world to pot it with hot glue. <laughs> but yeah if you have epoxy resin, which I don't because I literally threw out the last batch of old resin that just doesn't work anymore it's brutal when that happens but uh, I'll show you what you would do you would just basically epoxy this in fill the whole thing in with resin um, which probably not going to work with the hot glue we 
definitely don't have the hot glue bandwidth for that. So I suppose we're going to have to just resort to old school methods here. The old insulate intake. Whoa, hello. One more should do the trick. Now this is super jank, but I, I think you're aware of that, right? <laughs> this is purely for experimental use only. If it wasn't for the fact that I was using it outdoors, I probably would be taking a hell of a lot more care if this is really in a position to cause danger due to fire or electrical shock in your home. That's nicely bundled up. So technically, we can just plug that in there. Uh, or there, the right way around. The board is a bit loose, so it's fighting me. <laughs> and depending on how you want to mount it, you can certainly mount it in the lid portion here or in the back. There's plenty of room in this particular enclosure either way. Um, though I like that, I mean, that's quite good. I haven't got any strain relief on here. Um, maybe I'll just put something on temporarily. Which will be this big old cable tie. And actually, if you really want it to work well, you take a loop of the wire. Maybe here. Yes, like that. because it's very difficult for that loop to unkeep itself enough to be pulled through that little hole. And of course, you, 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 your mileage may vary on how you want to mount this to make sure moisture isn't getting into that hole. You can always dab it with some silicone if you're concerned. So we have that in. I'm gonna screw it all back together. And we're gonna see when I plug this in Hopefully that little red light go on that shows us the power is where we need it to be. And with that, it's all pretty much done project. It's quite nice. Um, I would like to try different antennas, but if this is mounted on the, the wall, so clearly you can mount that back panel on, on brickwork or wherever you want, uh, as long as you're near a power source. And then you can just swap out different antennas and do your experiments. And this can be your outdoor relay node. And what's cool is you can still get to it if you want to just push those various buttons. Oh, there's lots of information here. <laughs> That's nice. Right, let's plug it in. And you can just about see in there your little red light, which means it's working just fine. So, how was that for a quick project day? Eh? Got a clean desk in under however many minutes this video is. <laughs> but yeah, if you are considering making your own mesh-tastic outdoor enclosure, I think that'll work. Comments down below of uh, your criticisms probably of this build, um, all welcome. As ever, thank you for watching.